Equanimity is nothing more than be, than being at one with God. It is what I was down in Australia just interviewing me, and a woman uh, asked me. She said, "What is your mission?" And I said, without even without even realizing what I said, I said, "My mission is God realization." And she said, what do you mean by that? I said, that's where every thought that I have is uh, on an equal level with uh, the source that I came from. You see, there's a link between ourselves and this source. The problem is that the link is corroded. The link is dirty. It's, uh, it's got all kinds of ego identifiers in the way of it. All we have to do is figure out a way to cleanse that link. And the more you shed these layers of ego, that I am better than everybody else, I am what I do, I am my reputation, I am what others think of me, I am separate from everybody else. Once we get rid of all of these uh, ego identifiers and remove them, what we do is we get to that place where we see God, we see love, we see peace in everything and everyone uh, that we encounter. That's all it takes. That's what equanimity is. Well, one, one, the, the, diff, the major difference between spirituality and religion is that religion is something that divides us and spirituality is something that unites us. And anything that divides us weakens us. If I were to do a muscle test with you right now, ask you to uh, think about uh, uh, a thought that, that, uh, that excludes some and, uh, and includes others, just think of that thought, that I'm a, you know, a, a man and you are a woman, or I am anything that divides me from you. And I do a muscle test and I just put my, your arm down, you would find that when you think thoughts that divide us, you get weaker. And then if I were to ask you to just think of a thought that unites us, just think of yourself like the Native Americans used to say, that no tree has branches so foolish as to fight among themselves. You know, aren't, are, aren't we raised to believe that being religious has merit? Yeah, we're raised, but we're also raised to believe that, that we are what we do, and we are what we have, and we are what uh, other people think of us. And the fact is that all of us know that we're just in temporary bodies, that these bodies are on their way to someplace else. And, but we're, believe, we're raised to believe that. We're also raised to believe that we're sitting here still, when in fact we're orbiting around the sun, we're turning on our axis, and we're hurling through space at hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. We're, you know, but yet we're taught all of these things, and to trust your senses, and to trust what other people tell us. But there's a place within us, a deep, peaceful, loving, knowing place that know that who I am is not a human being here having a spiritual experience. It's the reverse, that who I really am is a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. That's who I am, and that's where you have to live. An elderly spiritual teacher whose name is Sai Baba, mm. who lives in India, comes to you in your dreams. Right. Who is Sai Baba? Why does he come to you, and what does he tell you? I'm not sure why he comes to me. Uh, it just started happening uh, several years ago. Uh, I started lecturing about this being, and uh, this is someone who lives at uh, at God consciousness, who has um, who has what Jesus, what is said of Jesus, uh, the uh, the gift of fish and loaves, so that the ability to manifest, for example, all of us have the ability to manifest something, uh, but usually it, there's a time uh, line between the, what we think about and what we create. Deepak Chopra and I put together a series of tapes one time, and uh, we talked about the four ways to get strawberry ice cream. So the lowest way to get strawberry ice cream is to have a thought, gee, I'd really like to have some strawberry ice cream. And then you get up and go to the store, and you go get your strawberry ice cream, and you had a thought, an invisible thing, and you got on your bicycle, you walked, and you came back, and that's the, that's the miracle. But it's a, the second way to get strawberry ice cream is to have a thought and stay right where you are and tell your children to go get it. Okay, so that's like you're sitting there and they go get it for you. So that's the second way. The third way is to have a thought, gee, I'd really like to have some strawberry ice cream. And somebody walks by and says to you, excuse me, is this your strawberry ice cream? <laughs> and when that happens, we call this synchronicity and isn't that it is like this collaboration with fate. Isn't this an amazing thing? I was just thinking about strawberry ice cream and everybody's had that experience. But the highest way to strawberry ice cream is to have a thought, gee, I'd really like to have some strawberry ice cream. And then you manifest it. And Sai Baba... It lives at that level of consciousness where there's no delay between a thought. It's called the gift of fish and loaves. The ability to be able to manifest from your thoughts because you're living at such a level, such a high vibrational level, that your thoughts and what you are thinking about all become one, that everything is one, and he lives in that oneness.